Morning. Uh, my name is Gail McCann Beatty. I am the Director of Assessment. Um, I am here this morning just to give you all just a quick brief update of where we are right now. Then we will take uh, four or five questions and then we will conclude. So our deadline for filing appeals has now uh, passed. Um, our call center line is no longer working. That was set up specifically for helping people to file an appeal. Um, but people can still go online and add any documents that they want to add to update their appeals. We received a total of 54,539 appeals, which represents about 18% of our parcels. We've resolved over 13,000 appeals so far, which is 23.8%, and we have about 6% of those have been resolved with people withdrawing their appeals. Our informal appointments will continue until August 15th. The Board of Equalization is now meeting daily. Um, it is important for our property owners to watch their emails or their mail uh, for their notice for their hearings. They will receive those notices generally seven to 10 days prior to their hearing date. Um, and I will caution people if you're getting them by email to please check your spam because it comes from a dot org uh, email and some email accounts don't accept those if you are unable to attend your hearing there's information in your notice that'll tell you what to do if you're unable to make that appointment and each property owner will be allowed to reschedule one time uh, you all can get updates on a daily basis through our fax website which is the jcoassessmentfacts.com and then we will also be posting the notices for our taxing jurisdictions uh, when we get the information on their meeting so we uh, encourage people to watch the website for those as well um, with that that's all the updates that I have for today and then I'll take a few questions So we had, we had more appeals this year than we had last year, but we are way ahead of the game in terms of re resolving them. And it's primarily because we um, contracted out, so we have a lot more people working appeals than we had in 2019. Unfortunately, state statutes dictates that they have to have them field, filed by a particular deadline, and so they can, they'll have to come back next year to file. We're hearing from neighbors saying that it's uneven within neighborhoods. I know you can't do it after your appeal. You have to do data. But if you're using MLS and you're looking at the previous year's assessments, why do you see some neighbors and some houses decreasing in value and others not? Because some houses have sold. They may have sold at a de uh, for less than what they were on for. Uh, every house is different, and so they have different square footages, different amenities, different conditions, and all of that is taken into account. So you are not going to see two houses next door to, you, to each other that are going to be valued identical. There was a house that sold for more than a million dollars, and it was in December of 2022. Its previous value was in the 800s. It's now down in the 300s. How does something like that happen? I would have to look at that. I can't tell you just off the top of my head. It could be that they came in for an appeal and brought something that, that suggested that. I just I can't tell you that just from that information. Okay. The mayor referred to this assessment as a crisis yesterday. What is your response? The large increases that some homeowners are facing. I think we are closer to having most of our properties at market value than we've ever been. Does anyone else have a question? I think obviously you're going to have people that are not totally happy with the outcome, but I think for the most part people have been, and I think everybody has walked out saying they have a much better understanding of the process and why the values went to where they went. Are those walk-ins continuing still? Uh, we are taking a limited number of walk-ins right now.
Each year we learn something new from the process and add something, something else to it. Uh, from 2019, we added um, brokers uh, to our group so that people could come in and meet with brokers on their properties. That's something that I don't know any other county is doing at all. Um, we now do in-person uh, meetings. That was something that we hadn't done before. So we learn a little bit more each and every reassessment cycle and try to improve it to make it more friendly for our property owners. Uh, we we follow the market, so wherever the market takes us is where the values will take us. What is the overall increase? I know you said 30 percent before, but some different people are estimating it at 36.7, and Kansas City Star says 40 percent. The reason why they're estimating at the 36.7 is when they look at the residential numbers. Residential includes multifamily as well. The 30 percent was an estimate uh, for single family. Uh, we will know the exact numbers once we get through all of the appeals, and then we will report those out. Uh, the number of appeals just kept going up and up, and now we're at 54,000, I believe is the number you said. Was that a prediction? Was that an idea when this all started? It is more than we, a little more than what we anticipated, but we knew we did a lot of things this year so that those numbers were going to be higher. But I will say the extended deadline, uh, made it much easier for a lot of these tax reps who went out and recruited people to file appeals to say, well, you don't have to pay me if you don't get a decrease. And we saw those last few days, lots of tax reps filing appeals, not individual property owners. How, long, how much longer do you think this process will continue, like as far as Um, we anticipate we're probably be doing this for the next couple of months, but we are doing everything we can to get these done as quickly as possible. Let's see one more question. Yeah, we've had people ask us before actually coming in how this is going. Some have said it's going okay, others have said chaotic and stuff like that fiasco. How do you think this is going? I think it's pretty well as we anticipate it. Um, I think the process that we set up, um, I don't know if you all have been into the other room and actually walked through the process. Um, I think most people have said it was actually very organized. Uh, they come in, they sit down with the broker. Um, once they finish with the broker, they then go in and sit down with someone to talk about their property. They provide us with information, and we try to work something out. And I think that has actually worked very well. But the reassessments in general, how do you feel about this one? Would you hire this company again to do this again? Um, I think I would. Um, it, was it perfect? No. It's never going to be, um, but um, we are working through any challenges that we have, whether it had been done by a company or whether it would have been done by our department. This is not a perfect system, and we understand that, and that's why we have an appeals process. And so we will continue to analyze um, the appeals after we get them finished to see if there was anywhere that we missed the mark, how do we tweak um, our models and things like that to get values even better. And so we continue to learn from the process. Hey, Gail, mine's really easy. Uh, what's been the biggest misconception? Has it been that even though your assessment goes up, doesn't necessarily mean you're going to have higher taxes? That is probably the greatest misconception and is why I have encouraged people to please attend the levy meetings for all of your taxing jurisdictions. When your property values increase, your levy rates should be going down. And so I think people need to understand why the taxing jurisdictions set their levies where they do, understand those budgets. I'm not saying that they're wrong. I'm just saying it's part of the process and people have the right to know about it and to understand it. Thank you. Can I do a follow-up on, on your question? You know, the mayor has criticized and, and is concerned. Is there any discussion between the county and the city uh, with the mayor having a meeting to discuss these issues that he's concerned about? It's unfortunate that the mayor stood in front of a camera and made a comment without ever having a conversation with me. You want to have a conversation with him? The mayor knows my phone number. 